At the moment, 5G is a hot topic and certainly one that I cannot ignore. This channel focuses on terror attacks and events like it, but when it comes to something seriously damaging to the public, 5G and the smart grid needs to be addressed. Whilst terror attacks are being pushed through the mainstream media, the fast approaching 5G is not. Anytime it is mentioned, it is being explained under the guise of an upgrade from 4G. This is simply not the case and I suspect by the time that people realise that, the damage will be done so the word needs to spread fast. 5G is a fairly new topic for me and this video is just a quick run through of my thoughts with some recommendations too, as I recognise its seriousness. 5G is in effect to be the infrastructure to allow anything to connect to everything. The official term for this is the Internet of Things. Whilst a boring sounding name, it's a purposely loose term in order to put any item under its banner, whether it be a washing machine or a jumbo jet. If it has the ability to connect to another device in a central location, it's part of the system. That system is being named the smart grid. The grid of course is the whole network and not just locally, but worldwide. This is how big of a scale the push is for 5G. Tom Wheeler of the FCC in America gave a speech which alerted many as to what is coming and why we should be alarmed. The big game changer is that 5G will use much higher frequency bands than previously thought viable for mobile broadband and other applications. Such millimeter wave signals have physical properties that are both a limitation and a strength. They tend to travel best in narrow and straight lines and they do not go through physical objects as well. But brilliant engineers have developed new antennas that can aim and amplify signals. Now to make this work, five, the 5G build-out is going to be very infrastructure intensive, requiring massive deployment of small cells. I'm confident that the actions will lead to a cornucopia of unanticipated innovative uses and will generate tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's damn important because it means that US companies will be the first out of the gate. And that is why 5G is a national priority and stay out of the way of technological development. Unlike some countries, we do not believe that we should spend the next couple of years studying what 5G should be or how it should operate. The future has a way of inventing itself. Turning innovators loose is far preferable to expecting committees and regulators to define the future. We won't wait for the standards. We're already seeing the industry gearing up to seize this opportunity. Verizon and AT&T tell us they'll begin deploying 5G trials in 2017. And the first commercial deployments they're talking about are expected in 2020. And we're not done. As part of our July 14 action, we also plan to ask for comments on opening up other high-frequency bands. Many of the high-frequency bands that we will make available for 5G currently have some satellite users as well as some Defense Department applications, or at least the possibility of future satellite and defense users. This means sharing will be required between satellite and terrestrial wireless, an issue that is especially relevant in the 28 gigahertz band. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. If something can be connected, it will be connected. Hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole provenance of urban areas. The 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. A lot more antenna siting decisions by local governments and tightened our shot clock for siting application reviews. America's local governments will play an important role in determining how we fulfill this national priority. You can be sure of only one thing. The biggest Internet of Things application has yet to be imagined. Tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's 
damn important. If you think this is somehow limited to America, it is not. This is a worldwide issue and a quick search for 5G will show you that. I found when driving along motorways here in the UK, the amount of cell towers seems to have increased. Whether that's because 4G has been put in place or I'm more aware of the towers now, who knows. But one thing is for sure, farmers in this country have been paid to allow these towers to be situated in their fields. What they may or may not have realised is that once the tower is there, it is there for good. What this means is, as the 5G network comes into play, not only are more towers going to be put up, but existing towers are going to have more transmitters added to them. This is why the word must be spread before people blindly accept this infrastructure, or worse still, sell out for it. The possibilities of this massive data collection is unbelievable, and when used in a negative way, situations like this occur whereby a company is effectively tracking your movements. It is widely reported, whilst often contested by the companies involved, that mobile signals and radiation is harmful to humans. There are articles like this out there, but bear in mind what 5G actually is. It's a much stronger frequency than its predecessor, and furthermore, it's going to be pumping all around your home, street and town constantly, since everything and anything is connected. There is a fantastic documentary which should be watched by everyone called Take Back Your Power. It will show how from 2008 the American population were having smart meters pushed on them by any means necessary and that included breaking into people's homes just to fit them. It explains why this step is a significant one in the eyes of the companies and governments involved who allow this practice to be carried out. I'll put a link in the description and should the documentary be taken down I will upload it to YouTube. Here's a quick clip from Take Back Your Power. The definition of a smart grid is a wireless system that will fundamentally turn every single appliance in your home into the equivalent of a transmitting cell phone. That's every, every computer, every television, every furnace, every air conditioner, every coffee machine, every printer. Every single appliance that you have in your house will eventually, in a smart grid, have an antenna that's embedded into it that will transmit your usage data to a smart meter on the outside of your home that will then transmit your usage data to another tower receiving a usage signal that will then go to the utility company for supposedly billing purposes. Not all signals will just be about your individual use. There will be aggregate uh, meters that will bounce signal from house to house to house within a neighborhood that will then accumulate all of the usage data that will transmit that to the utility company. Now, what that will do is that the end metering system that is transmitting all of that data will be firing an RF signal at many, many times a second, which will increase the average homeowner's radio frequency radiation exposure exponentially. My background is that I used to work as a claims and fraud investigator for a motor insurer but now I work in civil engineering so the smart meter element of this infrastructure interests me. Watch this advert. This is Gaz. Gaz is a mischievous little tyke who before you know it can burn an awful lot of energy. And this is Lecky. No one really knows what they get up to half the time, and together, they're out of control. That's why, by 2020, every home in Britain can upgrade to a smart meter to transform how you buy and use your gas and electricity. All energy suppliers will be installing smart meters at no extra cost to let you see exactly how much energy you're using in pounds and pence. Your supplier will be in touch to arrange an appointment with a trained engineer who will fit your new smart meter and show you how to get the most out of it. It's time to get Gaz and Lecky under control. To me, it almost suggests that for as long as energy companies have been going, they truly don't know what they've been making people pay for and now with smart meters they can accurately bill you. When you see stories like this, you might think it's nothing more than a story to scare you, but really there's truth behind this. Right now, a campaign is being run making the average person here in the UK believe that they should get a gas and electric smart meter, and in some cases, believe that they have to have this by 2020. Why would that be? Well, it's simply to gather data, and after enough time has passed, they'll amend tariffs to suit them, not you. Time and time again the public gets stung by these energy firms, so why is this time going to be any different? Think about it, the government have requested the smart meter push with the deadline of 2020. 
For this, the public will get a free smart meter, it will be fitted for free, and in some cases, one day of the weekend will be free for gas and electric. That's a lot of free stuff, they will come back for that and you know they will. If for any reason you don't or can't pay, they can turn your supply off remotely since it's now on the smart grid. Remember, gas and electric are luxuries and it saves them having to send out any letters. What many may not know is that the bigger housing developers are actually being paid by E.ON and British Gas to make sure they install smart meters in all new homes. They're being paid up to £100 per plot. Again, there's a lot of money going into this and as Tom Wheeler said, there's a lot of money to be made too. As a bit of advice, you're not obliged to accept a smart meter. No matter what tactics the energy firm try and use, simply say no. Please bear in mind that your existing meter belongs to them. They are expected to inspect meters every two years to make sure they are safe. This is also one of their tactics, to try and make you believe that yours needs to be upgraded on health and safety grounds. In this case, pay to get them independently inspected and obtain a certificate from an approved engineer. This can be used as evidence against such tactics. Going back to 5G in general, if 5G was just a standard upgrade with no negative connotations, why would they try and disguise the masts? Here's one in Macclesfield disguised as a pine tree. Now I've just come back from Cape Verde and they've built them as palm trees. Another observation I have relates to people who suffer from the effects of electromagnetic waves and symptoms of the like. A TV show called Better Call Saul has a character who suffers from these effects. Regardless of the plotline which questions whether he's making it up, he's made out to be an oddball who wears tinfoil as he attempts to shield himself. For me, this is conditioning for when people really feel the effects of 5G, so anyone who suffers that will just be disregarded and go untreated. We need to get the message out there and get people looking into this for themselves to get educated on the subject before a tower pops up outside their home. Whilst only minor steps at this stage, I've put an advert in my local magazine which goes out to about 800 houses in my area. This advert was £100 for a year for a magazine that's issued for free once a month. Since everything is going towards just being data, money is a major factor too. As somewhat as a New Year's resolution, I'm going to consciously avoid using chip and pin and contactless. The more as we, the public, use such things, the more closer the powers that be are to having a cashless society. Think of the impact that will have whereby, just like your energy firm, they can cut you off in an instant, your money can be managed in the same way. Whilst paper money is worthless, and that's a whole different topic, how will the homeless handle a cashless society? Self-employed workers who deal in cash 9 times out of 10 pocket a little extra for themselves, and in many cases, it's to make sure they make ends meet. Companies will only get richer, with the poorer being worse off. Terror attacks are to control people physically and mentally. 5G and the smart grid is to control the population in every other way in their daily life. Another step I've taken was to go halves on buying 225 of these pens, which have been handed out to work colleagues, given to friends and family, and even leaving them in restaurants. If you want some, message me via email. We do have to do something, because... If you tell me-